In this video I'm going to show you how to use interrupts instead of pulling to affect an LED with the switch on the launch pad. So in the previous video you saw we constructed an infinite loop where the microprocessor continually checks to see if the button is held down and if it is affect the onboard LED. This is the same as if you were doing something and you periodically went outside to check the mail every time. You wanted to see if there was mail, so you're wasting a lot of energy continually going outside, opening the mailbox, seeing if there's any mail in there, and heading back inside. This is basically the same thing the microcontroller is doing uh, without registering an interrupt and using an infinite loop instead. So what's more efficient is for you to say that there is a specific condition that you want the microcontroller to wake up on and do an action and then go back to sleep. So instead of continually going outside to check the mail, you'll just see if the flag is up from your window, indicating that there's mail in the mailbox, and then you'll walk out then to open up the mailbox and retrieve your mail. So let's create a new file. We'll call it but int for button interrupt. We'll include our MSP430 header and open our main method. as well as holding the watchdog timer and calibrating our microcontroller to 1 megahertz. From here we'll set the output direction for bit 0 to an output. We will enable the pull-up resistor as we did in the previous video for the switch on port 1.3 We will set the output for P1.3 high. And then we'll do a couple of things you probably haven't seen before. This is to register an interrupt enable for bit 3 on port 1. So in this case, we're telling the microcontroller when there's any activity on P1.3 uh, go ahead and wake up and do an interrupt. That's what the interrupt enable does. If we don't do this then it wouldn't fire the interrupt whenever there's a change on P1.3. For this one we're going to do port 1 interrupt edge select. In this case we'll set it high. This indicates we want a high to low edge to cause the interrupt to happen. If we clear this instead of setting it, uh, then the interrupt would fire whenever this pin went from low to high. So from 0 to 1 it would fire instead. But we don't want that since we have an active low button where the button is normally high. And when you press it, it goes to zero. So we want to interrupt on the edge where it goes from one to zero. And then here we will clear the interrupt flag for that bit on port one. So port one has a register for interrupt flags because the limitation of the MSP430 is that it only has a single interrupt for all of port 1. So that means pins 1.0 all the way to 1.7. Whenever there's a change and the interrupt is enabled for those pins, it's going to fire the same interrupt. So in your code, you have to do the job of figuring out which pin caused the interrupt and to act accordingly. 
and after this we will do a bit set of the status register to low power mode 4 as well as enable global interrupts. So basically what we have here is the standard holding of the watchdog timer, calibrating the microcontroller to 1 megahertz, and then we're just setting up everything that we need for this to work. You know, first setting the output direction of the red LED on the board to an output enabling the pull-up resistor for the switch, setting the switch's initial state to high or a 1, and then enabling the interrupt for bit 3 on port 1, and selecting the high to low edge as the interrupt fire, and then clearing the interrupt flag. So all this gets us ready to utilize that interrupt to modify the onboard LED. And then this last instruction tells the microcontroller to go to sleep, basically. So instead of running continually, it's just going to use as little power as possible to wait for any sort of interrupt. And then when it happens, it will wake up do what it needs to do and then go back to sleep. This is a huge benefit of microcontrollers. It's used all the time. You obviously don't run it running in an infinite loop the whole time. It's connected to your machine if all it needs to do is wait for some kind of external input to wake up and then do what it needs to do. So that's what we're doing here. We're putting it to sleep and it's going to wait for an interrupt which we'll define here. and you need to use the compiler directive pragma and provide it the interrupt vector which in this case is port 1 underscore vector these are predefined for the microcontroller so when you use this word here it knows that you want to define your own interrupt to port 1 we do double underscore interrupt void and then here you can actually name the name of the function for your interrupt vector as whatever you want so this this port underscore one this isn't necessary to be named that way you could name it whatever you want so go ahead and open that and we will simply toggle bit 0 on port 1. And lastly we'll want to clear the interrupt flag for bit 3 which is our switch. Now the reason this is necessary as I said previously was that you can enable any interrupt for any of the pins on port 1 and if you had multiple ones you would need to do the work of figuring out which interrupt has fired by you know putting up an if statement where you check against the P1 IFG register and see if it's equal to you know bit 3 or 2 1 whichever one you defined in this case since we've only defined this as the only pin that can interrupt on port 1 we don't need to worry about any of the other ones interrupting it and we just need to go ahead and clear this if we don't do this it will continually fire this interrupt after there's been a change on this pin and toggle the LED over and over which we don't want so go ahead and save this and flash it to the board And as you can see, all you have to do is hit the button to toggle the red LED. Now again, you'll see sometimes we have a problem with button to bouncing. It's hard to notice. 
there it went. It went from off and then on to off while I was pressing the button. So to solve the bouncing issue, we can do the same that we did last time. Oops. And uh, just put in a simple while loop here that we're going to check if the button's being held down. and just wait until it comes back up. And after it comes back up, we will delay cycles again for 32,000 cycles, which is 32 milliseconds. And this is a pretty good way to debounce the button. So go ahead and save that and flash it again. And now you can see we have a little bit better more consistent behavior of the LED where it's toggling for every button press and there you have it just an easy way to register an interrupt for an onboard button on the launch pad